Hello there, welcome back to Nerd World Films. And I'm gonna say this film, freaking awesome. We're opening with that. Nicolas Cage, some people of my generation, any Nicolas Cage fan, we think of him, we think of The Rock, we think of Con Air, we think of the myriad of insane, over the top, but incredibly amazing and memeable performances of Nicolas Cage over the years. But then his career took something of a dive. I don't know whether it was because he was doing not very good films, personal issues, variety of different problems and contributing factors are likely what caused it. But then in 2021, we got Willy's Wonderland. And oh my God, is this film good. I mean, really good. And for what is probably a fairly low budget, or at least perceptively fairly low budget film, particularly when you compare it to some of his earlier movies like Face Off, stuff like that. But artistically, storyline, the film doesn't try to be anything more than what it is. It's a pretty straight up horror comedy. And it's not trying to sell you an idea or a message. It's not trying to be very deep, introspective, thoughtful. It's just trying to be seriously effed up and generally enjoyable. You are meant to sit down and from beginning to end be engrossed and be interested and be taken out of your reality and into the shoes of the janitor. That, by the way, is the name of his character. Artistically, this film is interesting. Nicolas Cage chose to take the role purely because when he read the script, he had no dialogue. The only he does is makes a few grunts every now and again during some of the fight scenes. He doesn't actually articulate anything throughout the entire movie. So we never learn his name or anything about who he is. The only things you can learn about him are clues from his character demeanor. The fact that he's particularly good at fighting. He seems to have some kind of severe OCD. And they do spot some dog tags in his vehicle that imply that he may perhaps come from a military background. But really, none of it matters. And the film knows that it doesn't matter. You don't need his backstory. You don't need his story. You need to just watch him be Nicolas Cage, being the janitor. So what is this film about? Before we get started on talking about that, like, share, subscribe, and comment down below and hit the bell notification icon if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more from this channel. And also note that I have another channel called Nerdworld Empire that's very similar to this. It is in the link in the, there's a link for it rather in the description below if you want to check that out. But now, what is this film about? I won't try to spoil too much of this movie, but advanced warning, there are going to be a lot of spoilers ahead. I'll try to avoid some of the major ones. I, won't, I don't want to give away the entire story. I want you to go away and watch this. But let's take you through the at least step by step. The film starts out with Nicolas Cage driving down the road. He's, his car runs over a leftover piece of police sort of trapping to bust the tires of a car. After sitting at the side of the road for a while, eventually he's lucky and a pickup truck comes along. But the guy tells me, yeah, 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 dude, we can take you back into town and get your car fixed up for you. It's going to cost. And it's going to cost a lot because his car ain't cheap. And he's got to order in the parts. It's going to be the next day. Basically, he ain't got no money. He can't pay for it. So the guy's like, well, look, I got a buddy. He's got this, um, this sort of old restaurant that he's thinking of reopening called Willie's Wonderland. Maybe he can um, do you a deal. So his mate comes to him and goes, yeah, look, I'll fix your car. No problem. I'll pay for it. I'll pay for the new tires and I'll pay for the work. In exchange, I want you to work a night shift in this place, fully clean the place up because I'm thinking of reopening it. And I ain't got any staffing at the moment. But if you do it for a night, go for it. And this guy is cheesy Texan cowboy through and through. And he says to him, are you part of the team now, buddy? And gives him a t-shirt and says, no, get to wear the uniform, but don't forget to take your breaks. We here are union. So he's like, um, okay, take my breaks at the exact time. Don't say that because he never speaks. And 
he goes in to start cleaning. While in the background, we've been picking up on various bits of detail, introduced to a few additional characters like the Sheriff, who incidentally never apologized for the fact that she left some of these road spikes out and she's the one that really caused the damage to his car. Really, the state should have been paying for it. I'm just saying there is a lawsuit in there somewhere. But whatever, he starts his job of cleaning. We get introduced to a young character, Liv. She is a bit of a troublemaker, a bit of a mouth. Her and her friends got some issues. They know what's going down in this place. So what is wrong with Willy's Wonderland? What's wrong with this deal? Turns out he is a human sacrifice, being sacrificed to semi-demonic entities. They're not exactly demons. They're really the captive spirits of serial killers. Willy, it turns out, back in the day, in the 1990s, when he ran this place, it was like a happy town. Kids had come in for birthdays and they'd have lots of parties and him and his buddies used to dress up in various animal costumes and they'd sing songs, do dances. Kids would have a great time. But every now and again, they'd single out one of those kids and their families to go for a VIP treatment. And while blowing out the candles to their cake, the kid would get a hammer to the back of the head and the entire family would be massacred. And they'd laugh and sing and dance while doing it. These people were batshit crazy. Now, of course, eventually the police learned what was happening and they raided the place. They decided to shut it down, SWAT go in, ready to gun these serial killers down, bring them in for justice. Good old justice at the end of a gun. If necessary, quite frankly, they deserved it. But what they found instead was they'd all committed ritual suicide and there were all kinds of s demonic symbols painted on the walls, on the floor. There were various other items that they had scattered about, clearly indicated they attempted some kind of ritual. Turns out that ritual had worked and the mechanical bodies of these sort of singing, dancing puppets they had, they'd now possessed them. And they started to go out into the town and massacre the people. At first, no one knew what was happening. A few odd deaths here, a few murders, no one really knew anything. But then people started to work it out. But then when they went after the school and they got some of the kids, the town didn't know what to do. They couldn't fight them. They tried. So they made a deal. Leave the kids alone. Leave the town alone and they would feed them. So Willie and his buddies stayed at Willie's Wonderland. And every now and then when a drifter came through town, they'd be given the deal. Go in, clean, and we fixed your car. In reality, they never came out alive the next day. The town, would, the sheriff and others would sit there, gritting their teeth, biting their nails, hoping for dawn to come and the people that they'd put in there to be dead. And hopefully the bloodlust of Willie and his compatriots would be satisfied. And incidentally, the puppets they use, those machines, they're, they're all awesome. Really, really well done. But because of the tight budget, there was restrictions on exactly how many, you know, times as much they could, they, could, they could have. They couldn't have a lot of them. So they had to film all the scenes where these things were in perfect condition first and then kind of beat them up and rough them up a little bit for them to go away. These were all obviously actors in suits who could barely see and barely move, but they do a great job of portraying menace by doing quick camera angles, close-ups, and sharp movements to really portray a lot of menace, particularly from some of the characters. Particularly one, Siren Sarah. Keep her in mind, because she is freaking awesome. She's way better than Willie, I'm saying. Now, the janitor at this point has been sent into the place. They just think another sacrifice is going to continue his car. Everything will be fine. Now, he starts spotlessly cleaning this place. Every now and again, the animatronics seem to come on and start singing. He notices it, turns them off, goes for his break, drinks his little drink, has a go on the pinball machine. But then, one of them comes to life and tries to kill him. He ends up beating the living hell out of it. And sort of one of the things that's keeping the R rating of this thing down is because although there is a lot of violence and blood and destruction in it, most of it is perpetrated against these machines. And there ain't that much blood, they're just mechanical, so it's oil and other things that work as a nice substitute for blood. And they kind of just die without dying, if you know what I mean. They're not, they're not dead because they're not alive, so you can get away with doing incredibly violent things to these things. Massive, beat them up, tear their heads off, rip their guts out, tear their arms and legs off and beat them to death with them. Smash the next one over the head with the first one's arm, shove it down its throat and tear its guts out of its arse. And it's all fine because it's all machinery 
and oil. It is mad the stuff they get away with in this film. And Nicolas Cage is a proper badass. Well, going on outside, living with friends, they know he's in there. They want to help him, they want to get in, they want to save him. So she decides to go in, the others wait outside, and they then, because she's been in there a while, decide to try and think, well, one of them's got a bit of the hots for her, thinks, oh, I'm gonna, I want to go in there and save her. More level-headed ones, like, no, dude, we ain't doing that. When in reality, she's gone in there, and one of, the, one of the animatronics has chased after her through the ventilation system. She manages to get away from it, because it can't get back out of the same vent that she pops out of. She finds the janitor, tries to get him to leave, but he won't leave. He doesn't even respond to it, just goes on cleaning. Ends up killing another one of the machines, then goes for his break again. And it is insane, fucking ridiculous, how much this guy religiously sticks to his goddamn effing breaks. In the middle of all this carnage, with this what seems to be supernatural shit going on around him, he continues to go for his breaks at exactly regimented, scheduled times. The rest of the team outside, in the meantime, go up on the roof, chasing after the guy who wants to go in. They decide they're not going to go in, but then they fall through the roof and end up in a ball pit. They then make the horror movie mistake. It's like, oh, well, let's let's split up. They go looking for the friend they run into. They find the janitor. He still won't leave. They split up, going looking around. Two of them get get busy in the room where the, all the animatronics died. Well, one of them just stares at them, but they don't stop. I guess they like an audience. Who doesn't, I suppose? Giggity. Now, they are obviously then killed by this thing, making up some of the very few human deaths in this movie. These people are basically here just to be killed, pretty much. Now, in the meantime, the janitor has had a fight with the gorilla one in the bathroom, ripped it to pieces, but every time he has a fight with it, he bags it up, puts it to one side for trash, puts it out in the rubbish, and then carries on clean, completely cleans up the mess that's been created from the fight with the last one. When the sheriff, who basically has got a phone call from these kids that they need help comes out there she sees him but he's not trying to escape he's come outside just to put the rubbish in he's going back in they put him in cuffs they take him back in and she gets the girl drags her out gives her to her like this other cop to get, her to get him away and she's trying to basically she frog marches him back in with a shotgun it's it's mad even though he can get out because clearly the fire escapes and things aren't locked he doesn't leave, even though these animatronics keep coming for him. And he just destroys them, bags them up, cleans up the mess, keeps going. And it is spotless, by the way. This guy is an amazing janitor. There is one scene as well, which is fucking insane, which is a big spoiler. Basically, one of the lads stupidly listens to one of the animatronics and says, I'm not like the others. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm just stuck here like this. I need help. And he goes, oh, if you really tell me the truth, click, dead, broken neck. Idiot. The girl sees this. The machine animatronic then comes after her. The janitor comes in, ready to save her. Got his knife out. He's about to kick some serious animatronic arse. But then his alarm goes off. It's time for his break. He hands the girl the knife and walks off. Goes for his break. She spends the next 10 minutes fighting this thing trying to stay alive and at the moment that it's about to kill her his break ends he comes back and kicks the shit out of it destroys that motherfucker and then bin bags it up cleans up the mess keeps on going again the sheriff gets him she this is the point where she frog marches him back this time to willie apologizing saying i'm so sorry what do you mean you you, you can't kill them you have any idea what they're going to do to us without her actually thinking this guy's actually killing these monsters so i can't get over how afraid and dumb some of these characters are for that, but it's it's brilliantly done. He, of course, gets loose. He manages to kill, again, Siren Sarah, fights her off, kills another one while handcuffed. Then he finally has his boss fight with Willy, but he actually shows Willy who's the boss. He don't take no Willy. He grabs Willy by the balls and he proper rams it up his arse. And obviously he wins bags it up and in the meantime all the kids that have been dying he's simply body bagging them pretty much and lining them up near the door he then meticulously cleans the place all just in time for our original guy to come back plus the mechanic driving his car around basically gonna have a look in they find they look through the door and the place is goddamn spotless and there's the janitor waiting to give him his keys because quite frankly at this point they ain't gonna bloody try and stop him Liv gets in his car, the two of them drive off into the sunset. Not 
in a growth way because bear in mind she's probably 18 maybe 20 just a kid and he's Nicolas Cage there's no indication there's anything to that it's just not in a growth way they just drive off he takes her away from all this shit but Siren Saris is the only one left she's set a bomb basically she takes out the um, two stereotypes outside and Willy's Wonderland is left to rot in peace. While driving away, incidentally, if you're wondering how Liv got back to the place when the other cop took her away, she managed to convince him that all this was wrong. He wasn't really aware of it at the beginning of the movie. He was kind of suckered into this, told that if you don't do this, these things will come after your family. You've got a kid, you know. He's like, no, we can't do this. I'm going to help you. He tries to go back. One of the animatronics comes after him and kills him. She gets in the car and drives off after being in the animatronic cup. As they're driving away, in the janitor's car, that animatronic is walking back and they're running over, smashing into pieces, destroying the last one. Unless Siren Sarah survived that explosion, which I hope she did, because you know a sequel to this wouldn't be a bad thing. So, where does this movie land on basically the awesomeness index? A lot of films nowadays get a lot of heat and a lot of complaining for various different reasons. Some of it justified, some of it not. The morally and intellectually and imaginarily bankrupt Hollywood are often blamed but this movie is I genuinely think like no film exactly I've ever seen it's not exactly the first one to do many of the elements that are in it killer puppets done serial killers living on in a in another body Chucky anyone it's all been done before characters who don't speak for artistic reasons being done Loads of like Scooby Gang coming to the rescue world only just to be body, be basically filler. Done. Cult of a town making human sacrifices to demons to protect themselves. Done. What hasn't been done is a combination of many of these different factors done with something of a humorous twist. And I can't think of an exact movie, correct me if I'm wrong, that quite fits that category. Of course, horror comedies exist, plenty of them do. This film, though, isn't trying to parody the genre like, say, something like Scream. And it's not a full-blown comedy like scary movies. It's funny in the concept of how the characters interact with the ridiculousness of this situation. How the janitor religiously takes his breaks no matter what's happening. How he just won't leave when the door is literally open for him to just go. How the idiot kids separate out when they they know what's going on in there they know what those machines are they know what the animatronics are at least they have a general idea and they still do that two of them still decide to get busy when we all know the rules randy gave us the rules you don't do that that's bad do you want to die they must have wanted to die. i mean they went out happy at least it was so sad as well they were so close to being saved the janitor almost got to them in time but unfortunately didn't but he did avenge them because who wouldn't want nicholas cage to come and avenge them so this film on that spectrum is really good for a modern movie to be an original concept do it right do it well be enjoyable be thorough it does help that it's got the star power and acting chops of a character actor like nicholas cage helping push this film along that does help this movie a lot. Cage does carry this film. The other characters are all great, but if this wasn't Nicolas Cage, if this was somebody else, if this was Tom Jane, or I mean, I think Tom Jane could probably do a decent enough job in this role, but you've got someone like Channing Tatum or someone like that in this role, I think it wouldn't have worked. That's just me. But I think Nicolas Cage is genuinely carrying this film in a good way. It's really really high art low budget ish horror movie gold if you've not seen it you need to because just again oh my god to, to quote myself in the beginning of this video oh my god it is good it is a fantastic film well worth your time and as much as I say a sequel wouldn't be unwelcome they'd still have to get it right I wouldn't want them to screw it up and I wouldn't want to turn this thing into a franchise that, I think, would be a mistake. But as a standalone film, maybe even with a sequel tack, maybe with a sequel tacked onto it, I think it would work. But that's just my thoughts. 
the film itself is bloody brilliant. Now, at this point, I'd normally go into director and other actors and things of that nature, but quite frankly, you don't need that. You just need to know this film, worth a watch. And again, it's mostly carried by, just quite frankly, the fantastic visual and comedic performance given to us by Nicolas Cage, who's playing this straight when it's clearly bonkers and no human being would react so emotionally numb. He's got to be autistic, and speaking as someone who is mildly autistic, it's nice to see a super-powered autistic person in Hollywood. God, they, they get that so wrong so often. But this film gets his character right. It is worth a watch. And no surprise to anyone, I'm giving it six slices of pie out of my scoring system because it is nerd all over. This film is brilliant. It is well, well done. And with that said, if you're interested, if you like my opinion, go see it. If not, go form your own opinion. Don't see it. Tell me it's awful. Whatever. I think it's a good film. I enjoyed it. And I hope that if you've not seen it, you give it a chance and it will prove itself to you. If not, you've only wasted an hour and a half of your time. With that said, hopefully you've not just wasted 20 minutes of your time and I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, subscribe comment down below share the video around by the way if you can because i'm trying to make this channel even grow check out my other channel nerd world empire hit the bell notification icon because that's the real subscribe button because quite frankly you can subscribe all you want to most channels you won't see them unless you watch them or hit the bell with that said thank you for watching and bye bye i'd just like to say a thank you to everyone for watching that video i hope you enjoyed it i really enjoy making these if you did enjoy it please consider giving a like share and a subscribe and maybe checking out the other videos on the screen right now and in the description box below there are links to my other social media accounts